The Man Whore Podcast is sponsored by Promescent, the delay spray that helps dick havers last longer in bed. Like Eliza at the end of Hamilton, many of us phallus fuckers just wish we had more time. <laughs> Promescent has been deemed safe by the FDA and is available to purchase over the counter in most countries. But honestly, I'm not trying to go into stores right now. Best to just order conveniently online. Fan whores get 15% off their orders with promo code manwhore15 at promescent.com. That's manwhore15 at promescent, P R O M E S C E N T dot com. The Man Whore Podcast is sponsored by Alt Playground. APG is more than just a place to find couples to swap with. Alt Playground is a lifestyle community for all non-monogamous and sexually adventurous people to connect and share. And you know I started a profile. Join me over at altplayground.net. That's A-L-T playground.net. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Shout out to all you erotic laborers, sex saw technicians, and orgy orientation leaders. This is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. Hey, I, you know, I like those. Oh, I think those are like my favorite ones I, I've had for a while. Uh, what's up, everybody? How you doing? Welcome to my show uh, to, to, to catch some of you newbies up to up to what we do here. Uh, I started this podcast over six years ago talking to women I'd hooked up with about sex, dating, and <laughs> why we didn't work out. And we're, we're getting back to the roots a little bit. It's been a while since we had one of my past partners on the pod, and I have got on this week uh, my friend L. And I can't wait to share with y'all in a little bit. Um, and, I, and I will keep it more of a little bit than a lot of bit. I, <laughs> I saw some recent uh, comments under the Franklin Vo episode. People who came out, they were like, does this guy always talk about himself like for a half hour before the interview? And I'm, I'm living in a basement now. It's a nice basement. I mean, all th- it's a big basement. I shouldn't say it's nice, but it's big. And we, you know, I want to live like a 31 year old. I want to have space. I want to feel like a real adult person at this point. So I'm into the place, but uh, but holy shit, it's tile floors and the echo is like unconscionable. Like I am currently recording underneath my my bed comforter, attempting to eat some of this noise. Because although I'm in like the back of the apartment downstairs, this place is so echoey because I haven't soundproofed it yet. That like the sounds will bounce through my room down this hallway that is this private hallway of mine. It turns the corner. It then goes up the stairwell into the living room. And then I imagine it still bounces off the walls a bit to reach my 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 poor sleeping roommate on the whole other side of the apartment. So Billy's got to buy some sound panels, maybe get some cute rugs. We're working on it. This truly feels ridiculous. I feel like I, I am in like fucking uh, like a... Uh, so I get this new place because I'm like, I want to feel like an adult. I'm going to pay a little more, but you know, I'm going to get more space. I'm going to feel like this. But right now I'm underneath my comforter like I'm seven and it's a pillow fort. <laughs> it's, uh, I feel like we've had the opposite effect here. A little bit of a note again, folks, we have some spots still open in the Fan Whore Fantasy Football League. If you're interested, shoot me an email. Uh, it is a $30 buy-in. And yes, I have a plan in place if the NFL... <laughs> shockingly does not finish their season. We'll see. Uh, and if you want in, shoot me an email at manhorpod at gmail.com. By now, I'm sure y'all have uh, figured out that I am proud and excited to be sponsored by altplayground.net, the place to go for your next non-monogamous adventure. Oh, yeah. Uh, APG, gosh, they're like, they're just changing the game Earlier this year, uh, uh, a site some of y'all may be familiar with, Sexy Mofo, was merged into Alt Playground, and now they're also welcoming Swinger Social to the APG family. Alt Playground is making big moves to best serve the lifestyle community, and we hope you're going to join the movement too, because look, this is not your mom and dad's swinger site. 
Although your mom and dad are more than welcome, I would be happy to join them. <laughs> uh, but it, it, you know, it's not it's not all about just swinging and fucking and swapping wives. APG is part of the future of the lifestyle online. And soon to be in person again, I am sure. So uh, come join us. Come join me over at altplayground.net. Come sign up today. Again, that's A-L-T Playground. You know how to spell that one. Dot net. Before we get to L, everybody, let's go ahead and do a little fan whore appreciation moment. Okay. This is the part of the podcast where I like to give some shout outs to members of the fan whore community on Patreon. If you're unfamiliar with Patreon, it is a platform where uh, you can sign up for a membership to the Man Whore Podcast and get access to private sex-positive discussion groups and nearly 200 bonus episodes and oh so much more. And right now I want to say a big thank you to Napster Pepper. Uh, you're, you're one part something I love, Napster, and one part something that makes me sneeze. Thanks for being a member. Thanks for supporting the show. Uh, I want to say a thank you to Allison. And Allison, I got, I got, I don't know what to say. I don't know who you are. I don't have a last name. I don't know where you're from. You're, uh, you're not in the groups, but you seem to be eager to give me some dollars every month. I, I like to just imagine. I like to fantasize about who you are. Like, are you, are you Allison Bree of Glow Fame? Are you the famous bioengineer Allison Marsden? How about Allison Pill from the newsroom? Love your work if it's you. Uh, or, or maybe you're, you're the supermarket CEO, Allison Horner. You guys see where I'm going with this one? <laughs> or, uh, are you, are you the, are you really, are you the force to be reckoned with? Allison, is this you? Are you Academy Award winner, Allison Janney? Does Allison Janney listen to my fucking show? Holy shit. <laughs> Allison, whomever you are, thank you for being a member who supports me with your doll hairs. And you too can become a member for as little as $2. It's a great way to feel good about yourself for supporting independent content creators, as well as gaining access to bonus content and private communities. Become a member today over at patreon.com slash podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash podcast. Podcast? Podcast? I mean, let's be honest. It is a poor cast. <laughs> Patreon.com slash man whore podcast. Thank you, everybody, including Allison and Napster Pepper. And now for this week's guest, L. Oh gosh, big fans of L over here. You know, um, L is a L's a friend of mine. We we still chat, we still talk, we still see each other at events. And if you're one of those like every week listeners, you have likely heard, if not once, more than once, uh, the <laughs> very fun set very hot story of Elle and I's first date, and very soon you're going to hear her version of events. Very fun. Uh, I, I do just want to say that although I think that this was a really excellent episode and a really fun, cool conversation catching up with Elle and, and you know, reminiscing on some really hot, sexy adventures, um, Elle has been up in Connecticut at her parents' house uh, during quarantine, and she, for reasonable reasons, couldn't record inside where her parents were. So we recorded uh, outside of her parents' home on their little beach, like on the water. And although the beach itself is quiet, there is wind by the water. This is baby's first beachside podcast. We live and we learn. So um, you may hear some wind here and there. I don't think it's very distracting. I hope you don't find it distracting either. However, uh, with about 15 minutes left of our conversation, uh, there's some sort of weird radio frequency thing pickup, and uh, I removed it as best I could, but in doing so, um, it does make Elle's voice a little more tinny, uh, a little bit more processed, so if you think her voice changes at some point, it's that's that was just a post-production thing to, to make it usable. So uh, my apologies for the audio quality a little bit, you know, but you know what? Even Mark Marin, you know, he makes mistakes, right? His John Turturro episode, he recorded for like 45 minutes and then found out he wasn't even recording. So I'm willing to take a mulligan one episode a year, <laughs> uh, but I think you're all really going to enjoy this one. It really goes back to the original Man Whore podcast roots, talking to, talking to the past partners and ultimately asking that question. Why didn't things work out? Why'd we stop? There's a reason on this one. 
Now let's go talk to Elle so she can tell you what happened. Folks, the fight over masks are just ridiculous. People are just acting like they're this major unsexy inconvenience. Have we all forgotten how sexy masks are? You're going to hear a lot about Stranger Play this week. And what better way to incorporate Stranger Play in your life than to put on a fucking mask? If you forgot how sexy masks are, you know, why don't you go on over to to my sponsor, HotMovies.com. Click that search bar and type in mask. Yeah, let's see. Let's see how sexy it. Oh, look at these results. We got naked babes wearing masks. We have TS and the mask. Huck, Pappy and mask. The director's cut. A very masked surprise. Threesome with the masked man. Masked and amused part one. Do you see where we're going with this thing? The man in the mask. Behind the mask. The masked man. Masked orgy. The black mask. Masked intruder. The masked man and Teresa. See, Teresa, she's only fucking with dudes with masks. Do you get the idea? Put on your fucking mask. It's not only sexy, it's for the greater good. This public service announcement semi-unofficially brought to you by HotMovies.com. Oh boy. We love Hot Movies. It's a pay-per-minute porn site that makes it both an affordable and ethical way to hashtag pay for some of your porn. Today, the hashtag is hashtag masks are hot. So go check out and watch one of these hot masked movies at hotmovies.com. You get 20 bonus minutes when you use promo code MANHOR when you sign up. One more time, go to hotmovies.com, use promo code MANHOR. Yes, that works for the free trial too. And now let's go chit chat with L. Isn't it funny that you're like, um, what's your Skype? And you're like, yeah, Zoom me. (laughs) Oh, send me a Zoom link. No, yeah. Ugh. Hey babe, wanna wanna e fuck? Send me a Zoom link. Ugh, whatever oh. happened to ASL and no. give me your screen name? No. <laughs> Remember those days when that was that was my like intro to to life. I think. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Go home and like dial up. <laughs> life is gonna be all right. Did you school ever, sucked? But do you remember what chat dial. rooms you would go in? Um, I don't remember the chat rooms. But I always chose whatever sounded dirtiest, for sure. <laughs> I remember, like, a staple of the AOL chat room was being, like, a young boy. You go to the lesbians chat room. And then <laughs> it's your, your... But then you go to, like, a porn site and you steal a photo. <laughs> and then you use that photo to trade with other dudes who are pretending to be lesbians <laughs> to get photos. To get more photos. Because then you use those photos to get more... Basically, it's all everyone just trading porn, which we all could just go get. Yes, but instead yeah. we insist on pretending. It's a lot each more. Other. It's a lot more fun if you think that it's you making the conquer. Yeah, and every and the fun <laughs> thing is everyone thinks they're actually talking to lesbians, and they're the only guy <laughs> yeah, in the they're room. They're the only one. And the reality was I, probably I all got of you. Us. <laughs> and it, and <laughs> I I do remember I always lied about my age. Obviously, yes. can't be like I'm twelve. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that usually doesn't go over too well. Yeah. Uh, and if it goes over well, then that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> and also, the question was always bra size. <laughs> like, Interesting. Not one we. And that was I also like I don't even know that I knew what a, like what a size was. I was like I, I'll ask somebody else. Also, <laughs> I pass that information on. Yeah, and bra size is kind of like a pointless thing to get because it doesn't tell me enough information. Like, I, you can't tell me <laughs> yeah. 34D. I don't have a picture in my head because that, <laughs> that can look so different. Tit, in, right? In those AOL chat rooms, nobody was that nuanced. <laughs> yeah, because, like, you don't know, is this lemon-shaped? Is this a melon thing? Is it, the th- is it like, the flap cake? I don't know. We don't know. And you never know. I, like, <laughs> yeah. The the imagination on the other side was uh, as blank as yeah. <laughs> as it was on my side, my eleven year old self. But it's a good time to say I'm here with uh, and, and seeing again for the first time in a while. Uh, yeah, my it's good to see you. <laughs> yeah, Billy, it's good to see you. It's good to see you. Too. <laughs> I'm glad that when I texted you about this, you said, uh, "I've been expecting this call." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I was actually surprised that it has been this long. I I was like, it'll come. And then I was like, maybe it won't. And that's fine. <laughs> I mean, I think, well, part of it is like, I usually try to like, if I'm still sleeping with the person or like think I'm going to get a chance to sleep with the person, oh. I try to like hold off on asking Nice. Them so, I feel a little bit proud of myself. I don't want to be a tease, but I'm proud of myself for a little tease. bit. I think I just, uh, I still thought like, hey, if I can just make my way up to Harlem, like I'll like maybe that could happen. Yeah. I still thought there I was Jim Carrey. I thought there was still a chance. There's always a chance. There is a chance? Oh. There's always a chance. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good to know. I'm I gonna... I don't like closing doors. I'm please keep my door <laughs> just cracked open so some light can get in. You're also a very very special door in oh. my in my book of doors. <laughs> oh, well do would you would you care to tell the story of that door? Okay. Um so Really, the the like thing that I think is most prized about our relationship to me is the um, the intro to Hacienda, oh. and I I am very forever forever grateful <laughs> to you for that. <laughs> I um, yeah, I'm still super involved with them. And I and I love that community, and and also just like every relationship that I'm in is a little bit more exploratory into myself, and you, and you were a big big part of that. I'm glad that is that's a very <laughs> true thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we met on one of those little apps, uh, the Field. We met on Field. What brought you to Field of all of all places? We. What brought me to Field? Originally, yeah. Okay. I think I was, I know what brought me to Fields. I was in search of something. I started listening to a podcast that you were on. I started listening to, no, you, like, you were, later I listened to your episode. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know of you. It was Guys We Fucked. Oh, okay. Yes. (laughs) And they were big fans of Fields. Oh. And um, so I was on that. I don't remember if I met you before or after, like, really being more, having more of a, like, threesome objective. <laughs> but every time I go on there with the, uh, with the thought of meeting a girl, I always meet a really awesome guy. Huh? And that's fine, too. It just doesn't happen to, you know, be uh, involved the guy that I'm also dating. Well, I had, well, I am. I dug it up on my phone was the first, the first message. Yes. Which was you messaging me on field saying, "Who's that? Is that mom? My mom. Okay. <laughs> do you want to pause? Move? It's oh, up to you. Can we pause? Yeah, we can pause. Let me do a stop. Actually, now that we're further away from your mother. <laughs> yeah. I found awkward, that, <laughs> awkward moments. Well, I found. I pulled up the first message that we had, Uh-oh. which was um, you reached out to me. At twelve twenty eight a.m. on August seventh, twenty eighteen. Twenty eighteen. Okay, I'll never, I'll never forget. There it is. Wait, uh, what's the date today? Exactly, exactly <laughs> two years ago. Is yeah, that? just about. Just about. <laughs> uh, it just says, "Hi, what stranger play? I'm really into men who like things in their butt." Oh, okay. That, was, that you like hard, strong, open. <laughs> what's this thing in your profile? Can we put stuff in your butt while we do it? That was your open. <laughs> Ladies, Amazing. send the first message more often. Not just Amazing. Amazing. That's it. And be excited about whatever it is that you want to be excited about. You were so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's my, like, only... During quarantine, I was going to run a online flirting class. And the th- only, it never ended up happening because, like, the sign-ups got whatever. And, um, but the only thing, really, I was going to say, I had, like, a whole long thing. The bottom line... Be excited. Yeah. Just like don't be <laughs> don't be bland. Be excited. Yeah. And I always like you gotta be. <laughs> Here's my follow up to that. I what was your profile? Do you remember what your profile said? I mean, I re- those things were on my profile. Yeah. Like yeah. you were responding to the profile. Yeah, yeah. Uh it just seems that like at least one of the things on there was something you were hyped about <laughs> yes. and one you were excitedly curious about. Yes. And yeah. there were only two things, so we know which one was which. <laughs> and then we, we like pretty 
pretty quickly like entered into a scene negotiation <laughs> yes. that would involve both those things. Both of those things. A story I've told many times to yes, this day. Yes, I am very flattered. <laughs> it's, it's a kick-ass story because I had done something like that um, like four years prior. Okay. But like we we stepped it up. Like yeah. we took it to a different level. Yeah. Um look, I let multiple women break into my apartment and molest me and leave, but you had said blindfolded, that. but but not to the extent that we did. <laughs> I think you had said that and I I didn't know what it meant. And I was just like, I guess I guess now's the time to push limits. Also, I think um I was very like, man, what a freaking great month that month was august 2018 <laughs> um yeah nothing like august 2020 mm-hmm. well, do you do you want to um share what your memories were of, of okay. our first date definitely i think that i was very much like into i'm i feel like i'm a very alpha sub yeah I, I'm very keen to gauge somebody's interests, what somebody is interested in, not only their interest level. And so from there, we like really built something really, really awesome. Have you told this story on this podcast? I mean, yeah, but like for only from my perspective. Okay, sure. Um, I was like, I don't. I don't fuck on first meet. I don't um, like hooking up with strangers. I like to like the person that I'm with. Mm -hmm. So stranger play does not sound... I think I said in like that first conversation stranger play is like is that role playing what is well like i genuinely had no idea um if that involves completely like (laughs) nobody knows nobody and everybody walks away at the end of the day i like that's not interesting to me is that why i pitched the 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 addendum it must have been that must be why i I mean it it had to have been like out yeah yeah for sure i probably would have just normally said let's go out for drinks another night it would never i wouldn't i wouldn't have been okay with that that was part of the that was part of the yeah. package because stranger play for me is really fun but it has to be sincere but it doesn't mean like i never have to see the person again because like yeah. if it was fun let's go have a drink like yeah. another night but uh we we added i mean we'll save for yeah we'll yeah save that it's, part, it's all there so then we like built this whole awesome scene and I got to know you through your podcasts. I listened to, I think probably first, because I was already listening to so much of them. I listened to the Guys We Fucked mm. episode that you were on. And then um, I listened to a bunch of your episodes. And I think I even read something you had written. Uh, or, or Maybe on Reddit? Something. Yeah. Doubt Reddit. Okay. We should get into Reddit after. I'm a Reddit newbie, but I'd like to not be. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it, it was some somewhere something, and I I liked what you said, or maybe it was just that you knew how to spell. <laughs> you killed it. I was very interested. I I didn't just read one con- one sentence from you and realize that you knew how to say they there okay. <laughs> over there. <laughs> and uh it, it, like I listened to your podcast and I I liked what you had to say. I was interested. We had a lot. I was in like still am always as like we all should be, but in a very exploratory place in my life. Mm-hmm. And um and we we had good we had good banter yeah. we had good rapport yeah we we volleyed well <laughs> <laughs> so what is it that we uh, what is it that we put together what did we do okay so um, so I showed up at your house and I came right after work you I had instructed you or rather we had built together that you were going to be naked blindfolded on your bed with all of your toys laid out and labeled and labeled <laughs> and it was like oh you can't put this lube with this one but you can use this one and, on anything and, and billy yeah. i could tell billy was just an a plus student he wanted to kiss up to teacher <laughs> because yeah you had the lubes that was that was above and beyond and i loved it <laughs> <laughs> but 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 L, whoever if Billy is blindfolded on the bed, who let you into the apartment? Uh, what was it? Actually, I I don't even. It was a buzzer. The door was yes, open. But, yeah, just but you just, had roommates yeah. that were sitting on the couch, <laughs> and they just said hello to me like it was so normal. Yeah, hey, what's up? 
they knew exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> so I had to be like, hey, some white chick's going to show up. Can you just let her in and point towards my door? <laughs> and Matt's like, yeah, I can do that. And uh, <laughs> that's that's that was it. They were totally chill. They didn't care one way or another at all. Yeah. And then... Um, what you, would you think when you walked I, into that door and saw me? Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. I had I already knew your face. You're you're Googleable. Um and so I wasn't surprised. I was very happy about how you like laid everything out, you labeled everything. I had instructed you to leave whiskey and you had a big bottle of bullet. I think I may have even fed you a yes, shot. Yes, you did. Yes, <laughs> yeah. you did. I would never uh I would never drink alone. <laughs> <laughs> but I do need the drink. <laughs> And um, and then I had you undress me, and you said as you were unbuttoning my dress, I wore a long like boyfriend t-shirt style dress, and as you were unbuttoning it, you said, "Oh wow!" And you like were feeling, and I was like, "This is." perfect this is exactly i wanted to i remember i wanted to get i was on field at that point in time whether it was like after before whatever it was with the intention to try my hand at being more dominant try my hand at like yeah you and did you good were job. just such a good find i remember you had a lot of many many butt toys we had discussed like anal play and your saving pegging for marriage Mm -hmm. (laughs) um we so i was playing with those toys with you as we were getting naked i think i sat on your face for a while oh definitely yeah yeah yeah. that was a lot of fun (laughs) thank you (laughs) if i didn't say it then i will say it again now (laughs) like yes um many thanks a I, um, yeah, so then we started playing, and you had, we had already discussed calling colors, Mm -hmm. which was something I also was new to, um, You were my first red. And that was it. You're the first time I've ever had to call red. That was it, yeah. And it was, like, the best experience of safe wording (laughs) that, like, I think one could have. That's amazing because i had never played with any safe words at right. all even well, you, at all what i didn't realize was that you hadn't penetrated a man before <laughs> no and if i had known that i maybe would have like pushed the smaller things to the front of the table <laughs> because you went straight for a great toy uh... enjoy the toy but you went straight for the lx3 plus um which is a, a very fine toy folks um <laughs> Very powerful. It's like a butt plug meets a dildo. Very great. And just, but like you took it first. And then you also, since you hadn't played with a man's ass before, you hadn't like known to like loosen up and like finger first. And and so you kind of just went in and like, it's just a little too, I'm, my asshole is not that loose. I wish it was. Can I, can I tell you, <laughs> I think that I just didn't have that much anal experience Yeah, I think you were just, yeah, you were just really excited, I think. females... <laughs> need the same warm up right. <laughs> for the most part. Which is why so many men should take it in the ass a little bit. A if little they bit. want to give anal, you should take it a little bit so you have an idea <laughs> what that experience is. So you just over you were just very over eager and I was, I was over like, eager. I just was like, okay, red and I was tempted to take the blindfold off and just like call it. Yeah. But I was like, hold on. Like I could tell it wasn't malicious and I was just like, let me see if I like recover because like because I was like in a subspace and it was physically painful. So I was yeah. like, can I at least get the physical pain done and keep myself in this headspace? And so I just kind of like took a few minutes. I curled up and eventually. I it... think I I think I like coddled you. Yeah. And I I think I like thought there, I like took a moment to myself and I was like, what? Like I have I haven't played with that many a man's ads <laughs> but i have been in subspace before and so what would i need right now where would i want to be mm-hmm. and so at that point i was like wait wait hold on yeah. hold on let me let me just like get get back get back like where like because i was i was more in my head than in yours yeah. and, and did you uh, have a particular response when like when i said red like like 
because for me, anytime someone says red, even though I know it's within the confines of this is the fail safe mechanism, it's still nerve wracking to hear, especially like as a as a man in today's age where we're yeah. trying to be more conscious of consent things oh, yeah. and like I don't know, not raping people. Like <laughs> yes, try, we're just trying a little more, bit. Yeah, more than ever, thing. we right? should keep moving that. So, that on. <laughs> so you hear no, or you hear red, and you hear like full yeah. stop, and you freak. But it's like there's no reason to freak while full stopping. That's the thing that prevents the bad thing on the other right, side. Right, right, right. Um, so I know I sometimes get nervous when someone says red. I've I, never before nor after had uh, mm-hmm. any red or stop experience. I don't think, um, I don't know. Like, I don't think, I don't think it was, I don't, I don't remember my exact like Sorry. reaction. I do remember talking to you at the bar after about it. And you were like, thank you. You thanked me for doing something hyper specific and I don't remember what it was but I remember that you articulated it well and you were like you that like specificity that you gave the feedback was like so appreciated and so it made it like I was still kind of nervous the whole time because I had never like it was a very 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 new experience for me um and uh and so after that like i i think i was still i like i don't know if you experienced the second half of like your bedroom portion of that date <laughs> as i like actually it was great like it was great well, well th- okay. that's wh- that's why i say like it was the best experience i could have not just because like you respected the safe word because like yeah. you would hope a normal person does right. it was that we were able to get back into it after some cuddles and some coming down we were able to get back into it, yeah. back in the scene. We were able to go back to putting we things in my played. butt. Yeah. <laughs> we And I, like, kind of talked you through it a little bit once I realized, like, you were experienced with that. And we had, like, a really delightful scene. We like, had a really I fun came, scene. You came, people yeah. come. And then <laughs> you just put your clothes on. <laughs> and Yeah. And then uh, <laughs> I, I, like, kind of got back into, like, a Dom character. And I was, like meet me or rather shot, i said you, you i me a text. i yeah i left yeah. i left and i said i'll, I'll text you yeah and you'll you'll meet me there in whatever yeah. 10 minutes and it was like a nearby bar yeah which was which was and the was thing perfect. that we like said before and like i knew you were going to text me unless yeah. you didn't have a good time i knew you were going to text me a bar afterwards yeah which was like when you leave the room, I'm still there blindfolded waiting for, like, you to really, really be gone. Yeah. And to just, like, enjoy the fucking warmth of what happened. And I know that we're also not done. Because yeah. I know that, like, oh, I'm going to get to go now have, like, hopefully an awesome, like, cool, totally almost normal first date. And that's – and that's I, – I felt the same. I was like, all right. Now we're, like, in a first date. Yeah. This is great. I'm an advocate for the reverse first date. Do a play first. Because <laughs> yeah. worst case scenario is, hey, hopefully you all meet each other, come, and then uh, you leave. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have the date part, and if it's no good, you don't have to see each other again. Yeah. And it's not for nothing. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Hello. Hey, doggy. Hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, no, 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 no. Not that way. Well, what do you remember from the date portion from the bar? Like, what was? what's the feeling of you're sitting... One, I don't know how I beat you to the bar because, like, I purposefully waited. You beat me to the bar? I beat you to the bar. I was like, fuck, I think I beat her here. Uh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Which is fine. But, like, that's so funny. Do you remember what it felt like to sit across from a dude you just, like, basically molested for an hour? <laughs> You didn't see I you? was so, at that point, I was so, you had made me so comfortable. I was, like, like I was trying to play in a role of being the caretaker dom mm. the person who like knows what's up and is in a role of like being in control but in reality i was like completely uh, in a new in environment completely yeah. so like i was very very i was just i remember being grateful that i was comfortable you complimented me a lot and that was so are we not supposed to <laughs> So great. I was so, yeah, you are always supposed to, but it was, it was really, it was really comforting and that put me at ease a lot. And then we had a great first date. We had a lot to talk about, like genuinely. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I got like a hand job in an alley afterwards. Yes. Oh. I remember that. I've, I've been eyeing that alley ever since I found it to take a piss like months prior. I was like, yeah, I was, I was back there. That's being what like, you had said. This would be good for like, like to fuck or do something back here. 
when I'm not taking a whiz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know me, always the romantic. So yeah, but that was the beginning of like what was a really nice, like fun, um, you know, fuck buddy ship. You came at the 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 tail end of me having like a high sex drive. I don't know if that had to do with me turning 30. Till like, end. Yeah, because like not like part of the reason I perceived us as like hooking up less was in part because I just was less horny. I wasn't wow. eating very well. Um, I I think I just started being able to work out again, but then we hit the winter and whatever. Um, I just remember being less driven by that went like towards the end and that that was partially why because it wasn't like i didn't find you any less attractive you didn't get worse in bed yeah yeah um, we didn't like <laughs> stop having good times like we'd have this threesome we go to this sex party right yeah. like we're having we had fun really good times a lot of fun <laughs> a lot of fun but like also i was smoke starting to smoke weed a little more and i just kind of mm-hmm. was like being content hanging at home yeah with a bowl instead of like yeah putting my dick somewhere yeah you know? yeah yeah i don't know yeah um I, I I do remember now that you say it like that, the weed was like a thing. I remember you're like, Well, I'm just home smoking and I was like, All right and you'd be like, Do you wanna come over? Like, no. Yeah. It no you know, that wasn't uh that wasn't where I was. And we had a we had a lot of fun. Yeah. We had so much fun. Our second date our second date at Hacienda, was at Hacienda pet sex party. Was it? Oh, oh, f- was it really? That was our second date. Wow, that's rough because of the we had, there was that altercation with Shay. So for me, that wasn't like really <laughs> top of my mind. What was top of my mind was being fucked by a fuck saw. Oh right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, there was that. There was that. There was that. I also met um, mm. who was like my quote nurse okay. at the well at the like fuck saw scene. Was she the kitten one? Yes. Okay. And I still sur- I see her a lot, and she comes and plays with me and my partners a lot. Oh, fun! Yes, yeah, she's cute. She's great. <laughs> she's fantastic. Well, so that that's like a that's a wild way. So that was also was that your first sex party? Yes. Right. So like I take you for a sex party and great, but like when we're there, this is also the- it was so eventful. <laughs> so yeah, it was a wild <laughs> night for so many reasons. One, this was the first hacienda like public hacienda party that happened since they stopped doing parties um, New Year's Eve. I'm taking you there. It's your first party. It's our second time getting together. It was our second time, <laughs> yeah. And then I get there, and Shay is there yes. with, like, this, you know, with two other, with a guy and a gal, and, like, the three of them are yeah. there looking hot. And I'm like, F-, and that's the first Very time. Very hot. And that's, <laughs> yes, I know my ex is hot. Um, <laughs> that was also the first time I had seen them since we broke up over the yeah. phone cross country, yeah, like months and months prior, yeah, I did listen to the episode oh. of you and Shay, and you mentioned me in passing in right. the context of like talking about that night, yeah. and that night was very eventful for you for a very different <laughs> reason right. than it was for me. Well, because it's your first sex and party. It was my first sex party. Yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah. You're not worried. You're like, okay, yeah. his ex is here. What's the big deal? I uh, I don't <laughs> think I thought like that. I don't think that was it. I think that I understood that you, that it was recent, that it was fresh, and that it was raw. I think that was something that I saw very clearly for probably actually more from her side because I remember she like kept looking over at you, at us. She did? She was under a lot of influences, but I... Like me being well, a no, female, no, no. No, keep like it, keep it to like no, they were looking over a lot. Yeah, and I yeah, could be yeah. Like, yeah, they were looking over. No, a lot. <laughs> so that's what I was gonna say. Like me being a female, I can tell like when somebody is just like side eyeing or just like aware of which room you're walking into, and like she was like like that with us, and um, at some point I didn't care which was like awesome when we were playing in the basement and then when we went upstairs and went to eric's room for the fuck saw yeah that that was the big that was like one that was huge i mean (laughs) it was crazy do do share with the audience what this was okay so this is my very first sex party my very second date with you billy (laughs) (laughs) and i was just in a very yes 
I'm uh, I'm I'm going for it type of space. And uh, yeah, we went to the party. We brought whiskey. We pre-gamed at your place. That was great. Made me comfortable with you again. Mm-hmm. Um, needed that for sure. Fold around like without blindfolds. Yeah. <laughs> needed (laughs) good things you know sometimes it's good with Mm -hmm. sometimes it's good without (laughs) and it was and it was um and we went we you made sure that i was there in time for the like uh consent talk that was great and also the consent talk all of that night was so memorable the consent talk they were like say no for yourself like take the no on for yourself and that's something that i've like taught my friends also like listen consent doesn't mean that he should gauge whether you're into it consent means that you're responsible to say no also and like why did you go over there friends are like i don't know i didn't really like him that much but he wanted me to come over like no the no is yours and did you feel that way before that night I, it had never been posed to me like well, what, what that. Was it had your, never been pitched to me like that. What was your relationship with the word no before then? I still don't say it very often, but I think that maybe definitely more. I take ownership of my of myself much, much more. And especially being in the sex positive space now. And it's been two years. Like, I'm much more familiar with that. I actually, I lived at Hacienda for a bit. Yeah. And um, so now saying no is something that I'm much more familiar with. Mm-hmm. But then it was it was revolutionary. It was radical. Yeah. The first time, I think the first time you hear like a, a consent heavy, like introductory talk at a sex space is like mind blowing. Like to hear, just to hear about like not like in, like non sexual totally. touch. Yeah. To ask like, can I can I touch your shoulder? Yeah. I was like, I didn't even, I remember the I first know. time hearing that. I was like, I never even fucking thought of I that. Know. And then I thought, oh fuck, what's all the other non sexual touch that happens without anyone fucking asking? I know it's made Corona easier for me because I am already familiar with saying, can we hug? Mm-hmm. Can we hug? And that's something that like people don't that like, and it should be in everything these things should be there always so that was great um we we took things slow in the beginning i remember um sitting in that fireplace and i was like um is this heaven i think yes we had good whiskey i had good company we had a fucking beautiful fireplace in a sex mansion you cannot get any better (laughs) and then also i do remember when shay walked in with her too she was like dressed as like school girls they were like they were like either like cheerleaders or like cheerleaders yeah 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 Yeah. and they i hate that i remember that i don't want to have that i i I remember (laughs) i remember that it was like i remember it because maybe because i heard the podcast of you two talking it over also but maybe because I like remember that there was something like and you took me aside and you were like hey my ex walked in and I was like okay like take all the time and then we got comfortable again we played in the basement which I think was also the first definitely the first time we had sex yeah and it was the first time I had ever played in company like in front of people yeah at all was that what's the feeling there like as someone uh, as someone and the first time you like took your clothes off, I mean, is that the first time you'd been naked in front of like strangers like that? It probably wasn't the first, it definitely wasn't the first time okay. I'd been naked. I do remember the moment when we walked down the basement and there were like multiple orgasms happening in different corners and like on different mattresses. And I was like, oh, okay. And I think then we went back upstairs, had another drink. And then I think I was like, I think I can be comfortable with this. This uh-huh. is cool. And then uh, now a good friend. I yeah. didn't know him. Uh, acquaintance I, or friend of yeah, yours. Yeah, he was acquaint- Like, we knew each other. You know, we talked yeah. at parties a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, he came up to you and he was like, would your partner want to wanna try my new toy that I built? You were like, ask her. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I can't make that call. And we... So... We went up to Eric's room, and I think he had two or three other couples. Yeah, there were there were two other yeah there were two other pairs. Two there, o- two other pairs. Two, so there were two other chicks there with you, and then there were three very lucky men that just yes. got to uh, help hold people down. Well, the, how I remember. Okay, first of all, the fuck saw 
is literally a piece of heavy machinery. <laughs> it's literally a saw. It that is you literally took the saw a part rotisserie. Off. It, it, yeah, what's it called? Rotisserating saw. <laughs> yeah, he took the saw part off. He put on a dildo, but still had the he put on a dildo. power of the saw. He like, you it, could nobody still else. Hurt nobody else could operate that but him. I didn't want to. He yeah, I think he may offer, and I was like, no, 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 no. no, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't. Try, I don't want to break someone's pussy. Yes. Uh, at this party, <laughs> it's the first hacienda in a while. You know, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Any other party, you'd be like, hey, sometimes you break a pussy by accident, but <laughs> not. I don't want to be the one who fucks it up. <laughs> um, like that. I mean, he may or may not. He definitely he still did has not it. break my pussy, <laughs> but um. He, there has not been an orgasm like that before or after ever. What, what was it? What was it like? <laughs> um, I de- definitely have never screamed so loud, like so genuine. I was just like, I, I was on another planet. Yeah. It launched and I was also me. trying to keep the womanizer like on your clip, but like yes. you're writhing and like, I, we're still new. So like, I'm not like a hundred percent sure. <laughs> like I know where your clip is That's with the lights right. on, but not with the lights off. I bought so. that toy, the oh, womanizer. Yeah. It's very popular. <laughs> it's and, a good one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was. And then, and like, and then on top of that, it's like, we've got this like closed quarters audience. It was it was weird. It was weird a little bit, and I was just really trying to go with the flow, mm-hmm. and it turned out to be fucking awesome. Um, it was crazy. It was crazy. I tried it one more time when and I and I think may have been with us. We ended up hooking up a lot, the three of us. It was it was a lot of fun. Okay. Um, we um played with the saw one more time, and it wasn't quite as like launch like. It's like off, off this, off this planet, um, out of this world. But it was fucking nuts. I highly recommend it. Try a homemade foxa, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe don't, because like I don't know. <laughs> and like, so, so have you been experimenting like that kind of continuously since you decided to get on field and start experimenting? Um. In in what sense, like with like like have you heavy like, machinery toys? like since we, well <laughs> since no in general with like with with your sexuality and with dating and relationship models like since we yeah. met like have you continued this so much like what else have you like since we stopped talking up like what else did you try and yeah. like and didn't like there have been there have has been so much exploration since then we probably hooked up how long did we hook up for you know several months like yeah like we met in august and we went at least into the new year yeah um we i i remember like yeah like we were going to the the pool parties so we still fucking then but like after the pool parties yes. were over we yeah probably into the spring parties. probably into the spring sometime around there i'm sure we 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 went to a party that was not a pool party and it was not a play party, but it was like a hacienda. The, the second base. Second base. Is that the strip? That was the night we had the threesome. I, that was, a, that was another, that was a threesome night. Yeah. That was phenomenal. Another like mind blowing. I got tied up by a that night yep. with the girl that we <laughs> took home mm-hmm. and they tied you two together. We, yes. Like, we to were tied other. together and we were, I remember when I, first started tying us up he was like blindfold or no and i was like the answer to that question is always going to be yes <laughs> always um and it was it was amazing it was mind-blowing that girl was fucking awesome yeah i loved her too um i've done so much exploration since then i started dating somebody in like f- probably february of 2018 um I met him abroad, but he was, like, already very um, into the, like, poly lifestyle. Mm-hmm. And so I did a lot of exploration in, of, like, what it meant to be open, non-mo- non-monogamous, or, like, what these terms meant, what it looked like to be sort of, I don't know, my style is always taking the terms, understanding them, and then throwing them out the window and doing for yourself. Sure. And that is, that's definitely what I'm doing, but sometimes I wish that terms were. So I was dating a guy who was very experienced um, in terms of polyamory. He taught me a lot. Um, I was also got, I also got more involved in Hacienda. Um, and 
now I'm dating somebody who's very kinky naturally mm-hmm. and not very open to or like not very exposed to polyamory to like open relationships he still like comes from a world where traditional things like what happens behind closed doors doesn't affect what happens in your traditional relationship really? yeah yeah and um he's so much fun he's so he's crazy well what 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 has he exposed you to um been new? so i because he's so experienced with like toys and play he builds his own sex toys um so you have a type <laughs> <laughs> or just toys <laughs> that's a uh, um he's very dominant mm-hmm. and um also very lighthearted mm-hmm. he's great so um we met should I should I tell that story? Go for it. Um, we met on my birthday, which was June of last year. Mm-hmm. We, I was out with another guy. That guy took me to an after party. The after party was at his apartment. Like one of his roommates was throwing the party, and um, me this guy who I had an immediate crush on um, and the guy who was my date that night uh, had a threesome. All right. Yeah. And it was so much fun. And then um, we, me and my date from that night were going to a, he's also in Hacienda. We were going to a sex weekend in the Hamptons. It was amazing. It was so, it was so incredible. This was a mansion unlike uh, Hacienda. I am very good at floor plans how, in how my do head. You, how do you I get, how got, do you get invited to one of these? And yeah, yeah. Was my invite it was, from? it was that guy. He's, he was somehow connected to that guy through other, like, mm, uh. It was like an eyes wide shut, like, level of a party. Like it's like fancy. The guy, it was, it wasn't like that. My, the guy who I was dating brought, um, a bunch of people. There was one other like male who was like a pinpoint who brought a bunch of other people. So it was, um, the whole weekend was like 20 of us and it was pretty intimate. And then he had a party on whatever it was Saturday night. And that was fucking weird i really was not into it at all i didn't like it it was terrible the hamptons party the hamptons party what was, it was what not was hacienda style like the guy whose house it was is a bit older he's like more of a swingers type of dude um he's not into like the consent culture he just wants like hot chicks around he wants to like bring out the stripper pole and then like i was i was actually like God, the house was phenomenal. The house was so gorgeous. I was on a day bed and like having a threesome in, you know, out in the open. Sounds in so front terrible. Of the pool. It was amazing. <laughs> but then he came over and he was like, hey, like whatever. And the other girl was um, like ass up. Mm-hmm. And he entered her without a condom. He was like, he, I think he did, if memory serves, I think he did ask to join. He did not put a fucking condom on. And at that point, I was like, this isn't for me. Yeah. This is no good. And he, my friend spoke to the owner of the house and it was a big deal because it, it is a big be. yeah. deal. Well, big ups to Hacienda. Yeah. Who, uh, for being better than a Hampton sex party that I was about to be jealous of. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It was, it was, it was cool. Um, we didn't go back. Uh, or maybe we, like, whatever. It was, it was great. So, so you, but, you met the current oh, boyfriend. Oh, sorry. Yes. Through to a bring threesome, it all. To... But he, he's not, what, what just, what, what stands out to me and like, let, we can get into it in a second if you want, but it's like, what stands out to me is that currently not into like expanding things not to non-monogamy within your relationship however 
um, kinky, yet is okay entering another relationship to play. So he was okay jumping into a threesome with you and that guy. Yeah. But he's not, he might not be okay it's, with. It's all very, it's all very hazy yeah. right now. Corona has like put that conversation aside. It's kind of like this relief. Yeah. I gotta imagine. For sure. For sure. Were there fights? Yeah. Like, there were. There was a time um, that I went to House of Yes and I made out with a friend who's mostly gay. Um, he's not, um, he, he's definitely, my boyfriend's never jealous of me and a girl (laughs) and, um, still he like, he's like, Hey, what? I'm here. And you're just like, they're making out with this guy. And I was, I'm like, listen, I've always made clear to you. I don't want to be exclusive. Like, Mm. why is this a big deal? And he's like, cause I'm here. And I was like, okay. I, I can understand that. That's mm-hmm. something like I shouldn't have done. I shouldn't have left you here. <laughs> that was embarrassing to you in front of your friends. Like I, I get that. But there's also a but way then, around that. And you can like, it doesn't mean like close off the relationship it means like in that scenario, what might be better is yeah. going to you say, Hey babe, can I go make out with my friend over there for a little bit? And he, if is uncomfortable could say no. Yeah. And then that's a, that seems like a less controlling. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's where, that's where we had ended that. There was another situation a few months later where I was like, a good ex-partner of mine is in town. I'm going to go see him today. And he was like, hold on, what? And I was like, yeah, what's the what about? Why are you even confused at all? Like, there hasn't been anyone else that has come up because we're in this new thing and it's exciting. But this is not, I've always made it clear. We had an argument few months ago at House of Yes, like, we have discussed this. I won't, I'm not kissing anybody in front of your friends. And I, I get that. But That's about I'm discretion, going... not monogamy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so that, so it's still, it's still like a bit hazy. There's definitely a lot of discussion. There's a lot of discussion that's needed in any relationship. Right. Uh, uh, Just, any of them. But, so do you... Do you still, when you decide, like, I want to go see this person or I want to go fuck this person or whatever, like, yeah. do you just tell do you just do it and you say, hey, I'm going to go do this and you do it and he has to deal with that? I, it hasn't come up. Well, like, I mean, you said, like, and I'm going to go see this ex-partner yeah, who's in yeah. town. Like, do you then just And then go- he got really mad. It, it turned into a really big fight. But do you go see the guy anyway? I, I, that day I didn't. Okay. Um, and. I was, it was almost a make or break moment. Um, I was like, listen, I I don't, I don't want exclusivity. This is not something I want. And he was like, okay, then we should break up. And I was like, fine. And then we did not break up. So it definitely unresolved. And actually, interestingly, last week, that guy was like, I'm coming back to America. And um, so I, did you say you. how? I think our borders yeah, are closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> was he a consulate? <laughs> and um, and I'm kind of like, I've always made it clear that I don't want to be exclusive. I don't feel right just like like taking a day off. We live together now. Um, and also, I really want to see this guy. I don't want it to be a fight. I don't want it to be a big deal. But... So I'm like, I'm, I'm a little, uh, I don't know how to approach it. Also, it may be a moot point completely because I'm going up to New Hampshire this weekend. Who knows how long that guy's going to be in town for. He really actually was like very upset at me. Rightfully so for canceling on him last minute. But again, the nice thing about COVID is that the out of town, one, it has to kind of put this thing on ice for a minute. The COVID guy, like who's coming from out of country. I mean, I'd imagine he's probably here. Like once he gets here, he's probably here. It's probably going to be here, right? Yeah. Yeah, So it's like, you guys have time. But at the end of the day, it's like. (laughs) Might not be though. I don't know. When it comes to think, when you're trying to negotiate something in a relationship that like one side wants and one side doesn't want, like if the, if the, if one side, if you're not going to break up, then that means one side does have to compromise. Or ideally, both sides compromise a bit. Like, yeah, is it a deal breaker enough for you? Where if he said like, "This is over," if you can't be one hundred percent monogamous outside of threesomes with another woman, right, right. I uh, man, at this point, it would it, like uh, before COVID, it would have been uh, absolutely. I'm walking away, but we've spent so many hours of goodness together. I'm like 
shocked. I can't even stand myself for uh, a long time. So you love them. Oh, that's a big word. Oh. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, I don't know. It's been like a year, so I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. I love him a lot. He's uh, he's amazing. Hey, what I say before we start? Just be honest. You don't have to say it just <laughs> within five hundred feet. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, he's. I am. I. I'm very. Uh, very much in love. It's wonderful. It is, and I still also want to see this other guy. I don't know why that like has to be. Uh, <laughs> It doesn't take away from anything. It, it it really doesn't. It really really doesn't. I need to I need to find a way to make that known to him. But um, but I I, I hope that you know you guys post COVID can figure out what yeah. the compromise is. I hope that the compromise isn't just well we can have threesomes with other women and that and full stop. I, I hope, hope so it's too. I hope it's at least a little yeah. bit beyond that. Yeah. Even the, if it's not a free for all. The the dirty secret of. Pre our pre COVID relationship is that my plan was for to quit my job, which I did, and then to go to Israel, which I did, and then from there to travel for six to in six months to infinity, and um, that part I did not. So I kind of had was saying goodbye at that point pre COVID. Um, I was putting a real pause, a real stop to the relationship. Um, a lot of because of the monogamy, a lot of because of other things. Mm -hmm. And um, But the monogamy fight kind of gets to act as an excuse to finally say, all right, fine, maybe this would have happened three weeks from now when I wanted to go travel the world. <laughs> yeah. Fine, we'll do this now. Yeah, yeah. I, well, no, we weren't definitely but, not going to stay together. But because of COVID, we ended up, I came back to New York, we moved in together. Mm -hmm. And it's been wonderful. So that's great. You never know. You never know. Here's my question to you: Do you? When do you like COVID secure and everything like that? Have you been on other dates? I mean, I wouldn't call them. I wouldn't call it a date, but I mean, okay. I did. You've um, seen other partners? Uh, no, no. Well, I haven't seen other partners. I have one person who I used to sleep with, who then I started sleeping with right before my road trip, and then when I got back, it was like about a month, and then we were in COVID. So, yeah. Um, we were gonna, we've been talking about it and she just isn't there yet. And I was like, that's fine. That's cool. Do you want to hang out in a park with masks on? Like, I, I also just enjoy her company. She's like, she's yeah. a nice, she's a nice lady. <laughs> um, no, she's a friend. And, um, I, I, I care about her in a, in a friendly way. I also think she's very fun in bed. So I haven't seen like partners, but I have gone, uh, to my happy ending massage lady twice. And I got a blow, fun. I got a blow job in Westchester on the street with my mask on from a stranger. It was a stranger place. Yes. We, the scene was, I mean, I think <laughs> I told this on the show, but I'll give the cliff notes version was, it was like a Reddit post I made. I went to a rand, a, a certain quiet street in her town. And then she, I didn't know what she looked like. And she was going to just walk up to the car and open the door to get on her knees and blow me. And then, she wanted a video of me coming on her tits and then I would just leave and drive away. And with, except for a few little hiccups along the way, uh, that's basically what happened. I even brought a yoga mat. So like I put there the yoga are. mat outside my car before she even got there, just because I'm a gentleman. <laughs> you are. Travel. You are. <laughs> uh, and it was glorious. Like the first, the first new blow job after Fine, like during yeah. quarantine was like, it was Fine. short. It was like, it was, it was needed, you know? It was much needed. Amazing. Um, but no, I, I I don't know that I'm ready to go on dates, but not necessarily because of Quora as much as, like, I don't know that, like, I have the capacity right now to, like, um, like connect with a human. Yeah. So, like, I'm really, I'm down for a scene. I, I have some scenes in mind that, like, yeah. I would like to play out. Yeah. One of my favorite things that um, my boyfriend does is, or rather, that he doesn't do, is he doesn't care at all if I play with myself. Yeah. And... Well, I mean, I would hope. No, would. <laughs> but I, I mean, I'd be concerned in bed if he when problem. he's in bed with me. Like when he's just like on his phone playing Tetris uh -huh. you and you're diddling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I still, I mean, who's going to have a problem? Who's? Yeah, I was shocked. Most of the time he's like half asleep or falling asleep. And I'm, yeah. I'm just like, this is what I need to go to sleep yeah. to. <laughs> 
And I like love that so much. <laughs> I I I'm all for that. I he also wakes me up in the middle of the night sometimes, which just like rolls me over and like spits in me, and then fucks, fucks you. Me. I need to do a little and more of that I with Megan. Go back to sleep, and it's so fucking good. <laughs> the way the logistics of usually the way it works out is, I'll be like asleep and just sort of roll and like cuddle into him and sometimes i just roll cuddle into him and we and we cuddle and sleep (laughs) and sometimes he's like up enough (laughs) 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 haha and he just like he doesn't even he just kind of rolls my like shoulder like over so he he can i'm like bent over a little bit more and then he just spits on his hand and like gets me (laughs) and then he just like he's so he has like amazing hands he just like holds my shoulders Mm -hmm. and like fucks me (laughs) that's hot it's so hot and then we just go back to sleep he doesn't he's really anti bad breath and so we don't even kiss (laughs) okay (laughs) um Okay, so like, uh, so let's say you're at a bar. Someone like somehow for some reason my name pops up. Maybe uh, there's a poster that says Billy Presida headlining this bar. It's impossible uh, yeah. because uh, no we way. don't have bars. I'm excited. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> someone points and goes, "Oh yeah, no, I know. I've, I, I think I've heard that guy's podcast." And you go like, "Oh yeah, I fucked that guy." And they go, yeah. "Really?" And then you talk, and they say, "Why did y'all stop hooking up?" And you decide to be ultra honest. Yeah. What what has before today? What has been your perception of why we stopped sleeping together? You ghosted me. No, I'm just kidding. That no, was not okay. at all. That's, that's okay. not it. It's that's okay not if it, it is. is. That's not it. Actually, I was I talking to before I before I like start like before we. That was meant to be like a laughing joke. <laughs> I don't know. It could have been a sincere answer. You could have you, but no, because you could have felt ghosted because I didn't want to no. go up to Harlem. No, no. <laughs> I was too high to get on the subway. That was absolutely not it. I think I was afraid that I ghosted you. (laughs) And I think it was, it was a mutual, like, uh, we both were, were in a bit different places. You, there were, there was one or two times that you were like, um, it's late. Um, we had always made a plan, follow, follow through on that plan and then gone out and like, and had fun. We had a lot of fun in, um, crowds at parties we had a lot of fun even individually together i'm not i just don't it's not my style for the like 11 p.m text like Mm. hey want to come over you did that a couple of times and i was like no and then also you were like i'm high want to come over and like i don't smoke at all which is i don't care that you do and i was just like who do you like maybe the like gauge here is a little off and i was like no i think it was a pretty it was a pretty mutual like phase out we we, uh yeah you you are so fantastic you have such a big place in my heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, depending on the outcome of that, of of that, those negotiations, one day, <laughs> do do is the door still open to have sex with you again one day? Oh, hell yeah! Sick, great, hell yeah! Fun, especially <laughs> in uh, like group setting. I I had a very spe- <laughs> I. <laughs> I've sensed this from you for a while, and I th- I thought you were gonna say, especially if like Megan's part of that package. Oh, nice! <laughs> no, no, Hell that's yeah. why I thought Megan, you, yeah. come at me. <laughs> I mean, I would hope you would want to fuck me again one on one. I just, I, I, you've, you've, you've repeatedly reminded me how hot my girlfriend is. That yeah. I assumed that that was gonna. Be I follow you. I don't. I don't listen to your. Uh, I don't listen to your podcast, but I follow you on Instagram, and she's Megan. You're beautiful. Yes. You yeah. Are, yeah. Baby. Yeah. Um, um, but okay, that's, that's cool to know. That's, uh, that's helpful for the ego. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, do you, do you have any questions for me before we, we finish up? Well, actually, um, I do have a few questions. Are you, do you have like another like 10, 15 minutes? I had like a big side, like question. Oh. I would love to like dig into on the air. I have tons of time. My yeah. boyfriend gets along very well with mm. my parents. Love them. Okay. If you have time. No, no, I got time. I'm just uh, I'm debating. Um, I'm going to then tease the listeners. I'm going to say, okay. Patreon folks, tomorrow you're going to hear a bonus episode with L here. But uh, for the rest of everybody, 
why don't you go ahead and say so long farewell oh, okay um cool i've never been on podcast before <laughs> uh yay i don't know thanks for having me thanks for and yeah you you <laughs> like for for everyone to know you you're a you're a fantastic lover <laughs> Stop it, yeah. yeah the man war podcast is sponsored by hotmovies.com Try out some ethical, paid-for porn for free with none of those hidden fees or secret subscriptions when you sign up at HotMovies.com and use the promo code MANHOR. Oh, we haven't had one of these in a while. And, you know, I once again, I'm forgetting how, how insightful these conversations can be. Because, like, I've been, I don't know, like, the we'll talk about it later, but my relationship with marijuana, I don't think it's a problem. Uh, you know, weed is not habit-forming, though I do believe I may or may not have made a habit out of it. I don't know if I'm trying to avoid sex, or if I'm trying to avoid other things, and the byproduct of smoking the weeds makes me a little less horny than usual. Uh, and that's something, you know, that's something that I'm going to have to revisit. I kind of forgot that me being less horny overlapped with when I started smoking weed almost daily, right? Um, I didn't think about that. I just remembered that L was towards the end of my high libido times. I got something to think about this time. Um, Did you have something to think about? Do you have something you want to respond to? Did you have thoughts, questions, or criticisms about this week's show? You can shoot those on over to manwhorepod at gmail.com. Hope you're following me over on the socials. You know the deal. Twitter, I'm at the Billy Presida, slinging jokes. Instagram, I'm at Billy is Presida, slinging the thirst traps. And on the Facebook fan page for the Man Whore Podcast, you can find some fire memes posted by Sophia the Intern. And that's also the place where you can go to get some Man Whore merch. Uh, next week, I'm really looking forward to uh, releasing my my episode with. The primary challenger for New York's fifth, I think it was fifth, New York's fifth district, a, a, a primary challenger who got 20% of the vote in Bushwick, a primary challenger who is a black non-binary SoundCloud rapper named Paperboy Prince. Oh boy, actually, I'm, I'm supposed to be interviewing him tomorrow at noon, so next week you'll be hearing that. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. Uh, go support the pod over at patreon.com slash podcast. You know the drill. Stay masked. Stay slutty. <laughs>